Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, another catch-up video here on November 27th, 2018. Um, I, I have like, I don't know, I would estimate maybe 10 records here at least that I haven't shown. There's more stuff in there, I'm pretty sure. Because um, again, this is only my, whatever, the first videos I've made since, that I've actually, I'm planning to share since um, May or June of 2018, so... Um, again, I'm looking for a house. I'm just about to get pre-approved, I believe, <laughs> and the finances are available, will be available, but, uh, you know, it's all got to be set in motion, and um, the hope is I can finally move sometime this winter, maybe March, maybe April, could be earlier, but buying a house for the first time is nothing that I would tell anyone that is easy, so anyway, um, so some stuff that I talked about in the blog probably, and some stuff I just picked up I didn't talk about in the blog. But one album is from my album of the year list, which maybe I'll find a chance to do that. I don't think I'm doing that tonight, but maybe I'll do a podcast. But this was a Black Belt um, Eagle Scout, which is Catherine Paul, who is it's just basically a solo project from Catherine Paul of Genders, formerly of, of um, Forest Park post-rock you know, band with female vocals. But this is really sublime. But, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit of a fanboy because I really enjoy most things I hear from her. But it's, yeah, it's definitely dreamy at times, like a lot of her music. But it, where it differs from genders is she's playing the guitar, and I think it's more in the kind of, I don't know. I guess it, it, it's more ethereal, it's less rock, and more kind of mesmerizing than genders. And it's more like Forest Park. So um, I don't really have really any specific standout tracks. And, of course, the jacket got, got ruined. It's just, this stuff can get ruined so easily. But if I have any specifics, I really... Mother of My Children, I think that was one of them. And then Soft Stud and Indians Never Die. Those three, but the whole record is like 35 minutes and it just flows. And it's really a good mood record. Um, so, yeah. Mother of My Children is the name of the album. It's, a de it's in effect the de debut full length. I think she put out a... like It's like an EP from 2014 or 2015. But yeah, Black Belt, Eagle Scout... Um, Definitely, uh, uh, and it was on my list. Again, I, not to spoil too much on that list that I posted like almost a month ago on the blog, three weeks ago. So, another one I got, and I know I got this as a result of saving some dough, just like the Godspeed, your Black Emperor album. Sufjan Stevens, my favorite Sufjan Stevens album, Age of Odds. The Prog album, <laughs> that's most prog. Impossible Soul, that's the, uh, the key track. If you've never heard any Sufjan Stevens before, but you like prog rock, you like the Deer Hunter, or I don't know what else you compare it to. Anathello, of course, a lot of the Chamber stuff, Typhoon, or or Cloud Cult. But I mean, this is more at times a little more electronic. But it just oh, it's just a perfect composition. Even though there's repetition, it just it segues and builds, and I never get sick of that song. Um, it's also unlike a lot of like pretty much all of the other records. He has electronic sides, but it, he combined the two where he used the the gang vocals and some trumpets. I don't know, um, and you know I haven't even looked that much at this, but yeah, it's Sufjan Stevens, um, Age of Odds from 2010, one of two releases he had that year at least. The other one, um, we f we forgotten people, not we forgotten people. I'm thinking of Broken Social Scene, something people, we the people. That was like it was like an hour long EP, which is a kind of contradiction in terms, but. Um, but that one's more like the Illinois, kind of Michigan. I don't know. I, I should go back and revisit that. I remember just being kind of finding that was okay. Didn't have any, like, incredibly, like, you know, breathtaking songs the way that, you know, especially Impossible Soul or Vesuvius is another one. The title track. I, well, I remember just, and this was in my top ten records for 2010, which 2010 was a fantastic year, which says something about it. So, anyway... Um, another one I got, which again I also ended. All of these are ended up on my list. Josh King's debut album, Josh King from House of Fools, North Carolina musician. Assuming he still lives there. Called um, uh, Into the Blue. It's like Josh King and Friends. It was listed on in some places, but I think it's just standard black. Yeah, Dreamers Dream. You know, I've listened to this like maybe three times, and I like it. It's got some moments that reminded me of what I loved in like some of the like more mellow House of Fools songs. It is a more of a singer songwriter record, but he has like some piano and I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely isn't exactly like House of Fools, but if you like House of Fools, it's worth checking out for sure. 
and I just, you know, I'm a, since I'm a, a big House of Fools fan, I definitely wanted to support him. And not that I loved it, but I liked it. It was definitely worth purchasing. Um, so anyway, Josh King's Into the Blue. Another one from 20, um, 2018. Ben Sinister's album, uh, Puzzle. What's it called? Foolish Games, not <laughs> Puzzle. Foolish Games. Very catchy and... I, I don't know. I listen to it maybe a dozen times and enjoy it. Certainly, um, it's cool. It's got a cool blue, blue and red vinyl. I don't think I showed this before because I got this like in July or August. I think I maybe made a video intending to show it, but uh, Shannon may be the catchiest song on here. One of their catchiest songs ever. Um, but you know, Gang of Wolves, the title track. I do. Um, I need to go. I haven't listened to this in probably four or five months. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's on my list, certainly. It's not that low on the list. But it, it didn't, unfortunately, really place as high as some of the other records, like Animals. Um, which, you know, honestly, I'm not sure if I, I compare Animals and this and the one before it. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, small Fame. Which one? I, I, I might lean towards Small Fame. I think Small Fame might have, you know more songs I enjoy, but then I think the best song that they, ever, they did in that whole period might be on Animals, but but this is a, yeah, and then this came with it, it was part of like a puzzle thing with Foolish Games it was like, there's like, I don't know 150 other pieces like this that people that ordered the vinyls got this this little guy, so um, again, I, I saw this, let's see Pop-Up Radio from Kai Dansberg he references Jellyfish and um and of course the Beatles and uh, Pink Floyd and some others in the uh, that Welcome to the Show the second track on here. I think he's from Germany, but um, yeah, he, he he posts a ton of stuff on YouTube about Michael Jackson. I like this album, but I I think it kind of doesn't have as much stain power as maybe I was thinking it would. But um, like Josh King and 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 Catherine Paul, he's an independent musician that. Um, you know, he always wanted to release a vinyl and it was like a big deal. Like he had like a, a campaign for it. I don't know if it was Pledge Music or whatever. But I was glad to support him. I'd like to see what he does in the future. And he got signed to a label too, uh, Kai Dansberg. But um, yeah, good record. That's the best thing I can say about it. I, 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 I haven't uh, had like a yearning to go back to it. I would say welcome to the show. The video too is kind of dreamy. And the references again, if you love Jellyfish, it's worth checking out. Because it was shared by Roger Joseph Manning Jr. on Facebook originally back. I don't know when that was. March, I think. March or April. So, um, all right. Uh, Jeff Buckley's Mystery White Boy. And I think I got this. Well, I don't remember. It just did come out. It wasn't a record store day item. This is a kind of a, one of his like two or three classic live albums because he has, of course, the Shanae box set, which I got for Record Survey this past year. Um, it's got, you know, a lot of the classic Jeff Buckley songs that people know him for. Dream Brother, which is a favorite of mine, Eternal Life, Last Goodbye, um, What Will You Say, L Lilac Wind, Grace, uh, Kangaroo, of course, Kangaroo being, you know, a standout live. It's a cover, I believe. I forget who, who the original is. You know, a lot of Jeff Buckley's career was was reinterpreted and reinterpreting uh, songs, which is like an old lost art. You know, but he had, kind of had an old soul, so it kind of didn't doesn't surprise me. But you know, I mean, this kind of in some ways concludes like basically to have for Jeff Buckley because I have Grace, I have um, I don't have the deluxe edition of Grace on vinyl. That's the thing I would probably love to get. Of course, I have the sketches from my sweetheart, the drunk, and I have the Shanae box that just came out. Uh, the only other thing I can think of, kind of as a stand, I mean, there's some live stuff. Of course, he did, but there was the Grace EPs. If they ever released the Grace EPs on as a box set or like a triple vinyl, I certainly will snatch that up because I'm a, sort of a Jeff Buckley fanboy. And this was Mr. White Boy film. I mean, recorded live 1995, 1996. I don't remember if this was. In different locations, there was one spot. I haven't read the liner notes in a long time. I want to say this was like in Chicago, but it might have been, I think eh, on the CD it used to say like maybe different. the different tracks were taken from different performances, which sometimes I really like because you get a sense about the different, you know, recordings on tour. So, um, all right, so another one that I found that basically completes or almost completes the, the the collection I want for is Murder by Death's 
who will survive and who will uh, be left alive, I think it is. Oh, I can't remember. And I gotta look at the year on this because I always get the, the two first, the first two Murder by Death albums I really enjoy. I did a video for the other one, which I'm not, I can't even, I would love to tell you the name of off the top of my head. Um, but uh, White Vinyl, and I think this is a repressing. Um, I just want to see the year, because one of them came out in like 2002, and one of them was either 2003 or 2004. I think that this is the second one. I don't think this is their debut album. But um, if I'm mistaken on that, I apologize. Yeah, I found this at Half Price Books, that's true. And I probably got a sale, I probably found it for a sale. It's like double vinyl, you know, $30. And this one's, uh, of course, got the artwork. Well, not on that side so much. There's, like, nothing on that side, but... I can't remember, you know? That's the thing, is the Murder by Death stuff, since their third album, or since their second, after their second album, there's only one release I really like. And it's the inst mostly, almost all instrumental soundtrack EP, I think it's called Finch, that came out in, like, 2011, 2012, something like that. You know? Nothing personal against them, but I don't like the way the guy sounds like Johnny Cash ever since, and, um, you know, the singer, and, uh, you know, they're doing, like, more country-ish. It's not proggy post-rock as much. I mean, it sort of is, but a lot of piano on this guy, a lot of sort of dynamics, um, just, you know, mesmerizing kind of segues and stuff like that, and it's very conceptual. I wish this would give a year. It doesn't. This came out in 2013, this version, so it's not a... It was a repressing, I think, but... Or it might have been when they finally issued those first couple records on vinyl. Because I have the other one, so. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I showed any of this stuff. Raina Kindo I showed on CD, but I never showed it on vinyl. Their album from 2018. It's a collection of songs that I heard back in 2016 and 2017. Of course, this one even has a crease. I'm really... Not taking care of my vinyl cases like I would like. I don't remember. That might have gotten damaged in shipping. But um, this album is called Happy However After, I believe. And um, I've listened to this, I don't know how many times. Yeah, they even have this cool book. So I'm on the Patreon. I heard the songs in 2016 and 2017, mostly. There's a lot of songs that have come since that will be on their next album. I don't know if it will be in 2019 or, or later. But um, cool artwork. You know, I think I did show the CD back in about, you know, it's like March or April or May, whenever I got it. But, um, you know, another double album, of course. I'm trying to I can show the vinyl. I think the vinyl is standard black. And this, this came with a boatload of, of, of extras and inserts. I remember that. At least the version I got. I may have actually purchased... The more extended, this is like a poster, maybe. I don't know. Of course, they used to be known as the Reina Kindo, now they're just Kindo, which I don't know if us longtime fans are ever going to get fully used to, but um, I mean, and it, it's not what well, it doesn't have a bad song. City of Gods, that's probably the best song on it. Like that and About Love. Um, but, you know, it's that song uh, that they did the video for um, Return to Me. I see, look at. Another art art by Jeffrey Peter. I mean, this this is like a like a long collage of all. I don't have time to show all the artwork actually. Um, I don't know if the other record is just standard black too. Probably is. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess the the Kindle loyalists and people that are like the Deer Hunter fans totally supported and enjoyed this record. I think a few people liked it more than their last record. Um, uh, Play with Fire. Is it Play with Fire? Yeah. This is the challenge, of course, with cases and stuff. Um, but I, I don't know. People aren't talking about it, unfortunately. You know, it's hard to really get momentum a lot of times with um, stuff online, unless you have like a video or something like that. But. And it's not their first album, even with the name change. I don't know, they need to get on a tour or something, but I wouldn't be surprised, though, if they did release a new album next year, if they pressed it either next year, or maybe, like, a double album in 2020, because they have enough songs they've released, like, one song a month for, like, almost three years now. This has, whatever, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This has eleven songs. They probably released 35 songs, well, maybe not. They probably released at least 25 songs. 
So that's at least one, close to another assignment I'll be. So um, anyway, I'm not going to go on to you know to death about the Rita Kinder just for the sake of time, but um, they are one of my favorite bands. Sorry, I'm not being captured. They are one of my favorite bands, so um, it's worth just showing it. And another band that's been very in vogue the last decade, last five years, especially in the last two years for me since I really became a fan a couple of years ago is um, Bent Knee. I picked up, they pressed their second to last album, their, their, be their third album. Yeah, Say When, right? Say So, rather. Say When's the Fair to Midland song on vinyl. And I picked it up when I saw them over the summer, you know. So, in fact, I, I opened this. Which is, you know, I kind of look at their last three records almost all equal, and they're all like four-star albums that have a handful of just, you know, goosebump songs or songs with goosebumps, goosebump moments. I like the fact that they included this, uh, the case for this, this actual the vinyl disc. But yeah, here's the the say so, you know, gatefold, uh, leak water. Leakwater is probably the standout track, at least I think of this album for, but um, Things You Love, Nakami, it's another good one. Um, but yeah, they're Land Animal, their last album, and then uh, Shiny Eyed Babies. I mean, I kind of think Shiny Babies might be my favorite, but they're just all so strong. It's, it's hard to really pick one over the other, or one over the other two, or you know, two over, over the, the one <laughs> that's not in that group. I mean, I would probably say if I had to pick among the three, which one's my least favorite? It would probably be this one, but splitting hairs, of course. A lot of people, ugh, this thing does not want to, to go in there right now. But, you know, I'm trying to wrap everything up here. I got a couple more left. Kimbra and her album um, from this Primal Heart. I, I don't, yeah, I, I think I just bought this in the store. I don't know if it got pushed back. I mean, originally it was supposed to come about a year ago, in December, and then they, they finally got released in April, I think. It's a good record. It's different, even from how different the last record was. Um, Everybody Knows is probably my favorite. I will say that the EP that came out, the reimagining of those four songs, might <laughs> might be even better than this whole thing in some ways. I mean, I, that's a, maybe that's a little bit of a, a jab at her in this record. Top of the World is a single, The Good War. I mean, there's a lot of good songs on here. Um... Human, uh, Black Sky, um, yeah, I mean, it's, like, like, uh, Bentney, it's, it's Kimbra, and so I'm a little bit of a fanboy, and a little bit of, and I have kind of a loyalty to her, and if I'm looking at her, her catalog right now, it's not, I don't like it as much as, as Vows at all, I can't, I honestly can say that, and I'm not sure, with Golden Echo in it, it's, wavered, but I probably would still lean toward Golden Echo now. Give me two or three years, I'm not sure. Golden Echo has some amazing songs, but this has enough good material on it too, and I like the fact that it's not exactly like the Golden Echo. I guess the question is, what does she go next? Is it going to be like Vows? Is it going to be like this? Is it going to be like the Golden Echo, or it could be completely different? Knowing Kimbrough will probably be different too in some ways. But um, yeah, I'm still going to pick it up. I didn't get the big deluxe edition with all the extra stuff. I would love to find a vinyl copy of that reimagined thing if it ever comes out, because that thing, I should get the CD if it's available. Th those were mesmerized. All, those four songs were basically reinterpreted in such a cool way. Uh, it's the good, I think it's The Good War, um, Everybody Knows, uh, Black Sky, I was one of them, and it might be Past Love, I forget. So, I think to close out this vinyl video, and we're probably like at least 12 or 13, oh, we're 20 minutes in. Or it's making up for time lost. Fiacra. This means a ton to me to have anything from him uh, on physical form or vinyl. This is a three, I said it was a four track single. It's a three track single. I put it in my top ten. I should probably go back and change some of the stuff I put in there. But yeah, yeah, this is, this is, it's Fiacra. And, you know, again, um, I love Fiacra. Fiacra's Irish musician who lives in England. You know, very schizophrenic. You know, my favorite release of 2014 was, was 2014? Yeah, it was 2014, was the EP, uh, Thought Steps. This is Evening Lights, and you get the two extra tracks, Sick Kids and Bang on the Door. So, um, you know, I'm waiting for whenever he puts out anything else, he's just going to release single after single. He just released a new single, 
um, Sugar Face, which I like. I don't know if I like it as much as any of the songs on here, though, at this point. But, yeah, no, the guy's brilliant. The band's amazing. You know, I, I don't think they're going to be for everyone because it's a little too weird, a little too disjointed, a little too schizophrenic, a little too genre-bending. But when he hits the nail on the head, and his mo like literally he's hitting like 95% for me, the guy's just kind of, I want, it's like Small League Sing Ship or some other bands, you know. I want to hear any as much from this guy as possible. I, I'm waiting to maybe he puts out a full length. How about just another EP or another three track single? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I love this thing. I was just overjoyed. It's like getting the Apes and the Androids 7 inch a few years back. So, um, but yeah, this, that's a lot of records, and I, I think I have more stuff here. Yeah, I do. Well, why don't I just pull this out to see if I can cram one more title in here? Um, Oh, I got uh, a couple records at the record. I got System of a Down at Agarda, The Mesmerize, my favorite System of Down album, which I don't think I even... Did. Oh, I did open it. Um, no, I did not. So uh, I can either attempt to do that live here, or I can pause it. All right. All right, I'm getting this thing open. Yeah, the last of the last two System of Down albums came out in 2005, of course. This was the first part of it. I, I think I'll always just associate the line Tony Danza cuts in line on old school Hollywood, but yeah, this it's, you know, I love Toxicity um, I think I might have that on vinyl, I don't have it on CD, I can't remember maybe not, but I think the whole catalog just got reissued on vinyl um, BYOB Radio Video, Violent Phonography Question, Old School Hollywood you know, I mean, it's I don't know. I mean, Old School Hollywood maybe is my favorite, <laughs> my favorite moment on it, but um, it was great to finally get my favorite uh, System of a Down album on, on vinyl. But yeah, if I don't have Toxicity, which I thought I do, but that would be one I would want to get. And maybe the self-titled or steal this album for the right price. But um, that one came out, and then I found this for, for really like three, what, what it was, it was... 398, you know. This was a precursor to Return to Forever called Before Forever. I've never heard it, but, you know, I love Return to Forever, and I wasn't, you know, spending an arm and a leg on it. Uh, it was used, of course. I think the, the condition's probably relatively, you know, it's playable. It's got, yeah, this is almost new. I don't really notice much at all on it, any issues. It maybe was only listened to once or twice. Quintessential Jazz series, part of the series that came out in 78. But I think this stuff... From this record, Chick Corea's Return to Forever. Chick, it's actually Chick Corea was was done before they formed with a title like that. And there's a whole write up right here that kind of goes into it. But um, the question is, you know, as far as these are all Chick Corea compositions, is he the only one performing on this? And this doesn't give a lot of detail. It talks about some of the other members in here. This might have been even going back to the late '60s. I don't know. This is maybe like a bio. But, um, yeah, I'll have to do a little more research into this. Maybe I can find a, find some of it on YouTube. It's four tracks. The Brain, which is 10 minutes. Song of, the, of Wind, 753. Converge and Sundance. They're just four longer pieces. It might just be like a piano. Just a piano improvisation. Which, Chick Corea has probably, you know, 78 or, or 112 different releases in his, his catalog. If you include Return of Forever and the Electric Band and everything. You know, this is one of... You know, many of those, a lot of those are, outside of Return of Forever, instrumental pieces. Because um, I know that's what he just did. He didn't, I don't know if he played too much um, individual, uh, I mean, other instruments besides piano and keyboards. Um, I'm sure he could kind of arrange for that stuff, but yeah. So, so yeah, I got to wrap this up. I mean, I know, again, it's been whatever, the other video I just put up or whatever, if I put that one up. The stuff from Record Store Day, but, um, no, I, I don't know, I need to do, I didn't do an album of the year, uh, I'm doing, working on the preview for the blog and some other stuff with my, the house buying, but, uh, I'd like to make more videos or just do more podcasts, maybe in the car, I don't know, <laughs> I'd love to do what Pete Pardo's doing with, with Sea of Tranquility, you know, because he's in a similar situation, but he does have a house, I believe, <laughs> he's not limbo, but in terms of his life and, uh, you know, responsibilities and stuff like that. You know, we don't do this for a living. We don't get paid for this. So, but thank you for watching. If you watched all 24 minutes and almost 25 minutes of this, uh, if you have not subscribed, I'd love you to subscribe. Please leave a comment if you will. 
and we'll see you next time. Thanks.